There we go. Check, check, check. Give people some time to hop in here. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, shout out Ryan. What's up, brother? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Got my headsets in on Bluetooth, so it's not the most ideal recording situation, but hopefully it'll work for this. Oh, hell yeah. I love it. Well, as you as you may have uh, caught by our title for tonight, uh, this edition of Hellhound Film Club is going to be Movies for Smokers uh, in honor of the 420 weekend ahead. For those of us that enjoy and celebrate, uh, figure we'll get some people in here and we will have a good marathon run of movies that everybody can enjoy hopefully some classics some for the first time i am okay yeah man yeah, appreciate you being the first one in here I'm just waiting to see if we get a few more people in here. Looks like we got Ryan coming in from YouTube, of course, and we got somebody coming in from Facebook. So, oh, shout out to Jessica. Much love, homie. Excited to get people in here. And uh, yeah, I, I pulled aside a couple, uh, pulled a couple joints to talk about, but I'm excited to see what. Uh, what people put in the comments too um if you can if you can if you're if you're watching this right now if you can share this that'll really help us get some people tuned in i'm about to do the same from my mobile phone right now um there we go boom So yeah, so shout out to Ryan and Jessica for being the first ones in here. Appreciate you guys. I don't know how I don't know how other people do it. The, the live streaming is hard. Um, I'm like so much better at just like recording it ahead of time and you know making it all sound nice. I don't know how I don't know how live streamers like do it. I guess if you have a big audience, that's one thing, but. Shout out to everybody that's rocking with us so far. We got two from Facebook and one from Instagram. Um, so I don't want to keep just like reiterating myself, but I figure I'll just let a couple people jump in before we get crazy into this. But uh, tonight is the return, or I wouldn't really necessarily call it an official episode, but we've been wanting to bring back Hellhound Film Club, myself, my good friend Robert, um a lot of the people that contributed to the first go around um you can hear some of those episodes actually on most streaming platforms i think there's like three or four episodes out we uh it's just audio only but um ever since i found this platform that i'm working with it makes it a lot easier to get on here and do the things that we want to do and then save it after the fact so um because of that, we're really trying to uh, make it happen. Oh, shout out my homie Eliza on here on Instagram. Shout out my brother Berserk. Appreciate everybody tuning in on Instagram. Sorry if I'm slow to acknowledge you. For some reason, Instagram comments are on a different tab, so I gotta switch between two screens. But, um, like I said, so basically back in like 2021, um, me and a couple of the homies, well, it was different people on different episodes, but we uh, we did an audio podcast called Hellhound Film Club. Those episodes were really focused on directors and kind of taking a specific director and just having everybody really talk about the things that they love about them or the movies they like or whatever. Um, but it's tough 
when um, we're just into weird shit. So uh, it took a little while to uh, to pause and get everything back into place. But um, I'm I just you know, honestly, you probably be surprised at how often I'm watching movies, and so I just needed a platform to start talking about this shit. Um, so I figured because this weekend is 420, there's going to be a bunch of rappers and a bunch of stoners that uh, are looking for movies to watch, hopefully, if they're spending their time inside. So like I was showing before, I pulled a couple aside and people have been hitting us up on our Facebook thread to drop some suggestions as well. So I'm going to jump over to that real quick and uh, bring up some of those ones we had a nice little thread going there um yeah hmm. shout out to tim hey yeah shout out to tim baron clark yo appreciate you tuning in on ig too um yo berserk said physical media wall is fire thank you bro appreciate that i uh I take a lot of pride in the in the physical media collection. This is, believe it or not, just a portion. I shouldn't even shouldn't even show this, but I still have so much unsorted stuff. I've got stuff literally sitting in front of me. I have my whole record collection like for vinyl my vinyl and my record player is all at the studio because i have the better sound system there um i got my i got probably 15 boxes of comic book boxes in another room in here um you know if you got if you're gonna preach it you better be about it right um so yeah spent all my money on movies and that's why i have a two megapixel webcam um yeah, my man Ryan said, Reefer Madness is a good classic. Dude, that is so, that's so wild. I remember the first time I saw that, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, and it's like living in the world that we live in today, it really is so funny to think about how that like came to be, you know? Um, so some of the ones that were on Facebook were pretty good. Oh, of course, somebody uh pineapple express got mentioned a few times that i think that goes without saying now um i like that i i fuck with that one though i don't know if i like i don't know if i have a bias or something but i it, i don't get sick of it um you know like i think of anchorman a lot and anchorman was so funny but it was so easy to get sick of and to be tired of watching and i think that uh that that was definitely like the had the opposite effect like the the premise just never got tired um i could go it has a lot of rewatch value because type um so pineapple express got mentioned a bunch so i can't i can't hate on that at all um Friday came up a couple times. Uh, I love that. I wish I I wish I had that on DVD already. Um, Friday is a great one though for sure. Um, I feel like this list is gonna slowly diminish from like uh, it's gonna diminish from like stoner movies into just like weird movies to watch while you're stoned. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's where this list kind of progresses, but personally I'm here for it. Um, so Friday, uh, dazed and confused. Uh, I think that that's definitely like on there for a classic staple. Uh, definitely can't be mad at that at all. Um, oh, shout out, shout out my man, Daniel, uh, Daniel commented Bud's house and i've never seen that one so i told him that that i was gonna check that out um mac and ryan said mac and devin go to high school 
Mac and Devin go to high school. You don't think you are allowed to watch it sober. I think that's pretty fair. Um, any movie with like Wiz Khalifa and Snoop Dogg, uh, you definitely, definitely should not be watching sober. Um, but I gotta, I gotta go into this Bud's house one more because, um, Daniel is the man and multiple people reacted to his suggestion. Um, so I'm going to actually check this out with you guys. Let's. I wish I could. Oh, maybe I can. Um, sorry, guys. I'm still learning how to do some of this stuff. It's funny. It said, uh, it said this works best on a good computer. <laughs> like, I understand. So, Bud's House. This was, this was the movie that Daniel suggested. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little scared that there's not a Wikipedia page, but that could be a good thing, too. Let's, uh, let's see what the IMDb says. Yo, that is a wild, that's a wild uh, thumbnail. Wow. When Bud discovers a treasure trove of weed underneath his house, he becomes the most popular stoner on his block. All right. All right, I'm here for it. I don't know. I like want to, I want to play the trailer, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that'll probably like sh close the stream, right? I don't know. I don't know if I can do. Oh, it's already playing, anyways. Um, okay, I guess I should stop doing that. Um, all right, that didn't really tell me much, but I'm gonna watch it nevertheless. I gotta figure out where to watch it from. But like I said, Daniel's the man, so I'm always gonna take his suggestions. Um, okay, here here's an interesting one. I'm gonna need. Hopefully Jessica is still in the chat so she can give some feedback on this. But Sam, uh, Sam mentioned half baked, which is great. Um, and oh, so, uh, let me let me stay on half baked real quick. So half baked was in my list too. And the reason I'm showing it to you like that is because yes, mine is a old blockbuster copy that. Uh, when the blockbuster near me was closing they were selling off all their stock so you know i had to go get it um so i, lo I love that i still have a couple of these and it makes it's like perfect that half baked is one of them um my man ryan said it's it's oh yeah she, jessica said blockbuster hell yes oh you don't even uh i have such an affinity i still have my I still have my Blockbuster membership card. I wish it, I wish I had it on me, but I literally have it here. And me and Nick both have like big Blockbuster hoodies. Uh, it's I'm all about that. I don't. And and honestly, it's funny while while we're talking about Blockbuster, let me just say on this episode of Hellhound Film Club that I don't want to hear any Blockbuster criticism from any of you fucking film snobs. All right, I see shit all the time, and people will be like. Oh, I don't know why people are nostalgic about Blockbuster. Like they ruined so many things and blah blah blah. And they were such a terrible place to work. And it's like, yo, first of all, people always come out and deny that when you come out and say that. So many of us have met people that worked there that didn't think it was that bad. Second of all, some places didn't have mom and pop video stores. They only had a Blockbuster, perhaps. Or that was the only one that they could get to or whatever. Um and and ultimately, Blockbuster is almost like it, the idea of video stores for some people that didn't have the fortune of going to like mom and pop video stores. So that's my rant. No Blockbuster slander. All Blockbuster love here. Uh, my man Ryan suggested, I meant to click this one. Uh, there is a British movie called Saving Grace. It's amazing if you haven't seen it. 
Um, oh, big shout out to Always Half Asleep who just joined the IG chat. Sorry, like I said, guys, IG is a little delayed, so I'm not seeing it's it's on a different tab. But much love to you guys. Appreciate you guys. Ryan said there's a British movie called Saving Grace. It's amazing if you haven't seen it. I have not seen it, and honestly, I don't know if I've heard of it either. Um, let's see. Let's see if this if this is, is this the one you were talking about. Hold on. Let me uh, let me pull this up. You can tell me if this was the one that that you were talking about. Is this the joint, Ryan? You'll have to you'll have to let me know if this is the joint because admittedly if I saw this just like this screen right here, I would probably I, I don't know how much time I would give it, but because it's because it's a recommendation, I'm gonna like dig into it. So let's see what Saving Grace got going on. It's got Craig Ferguson. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it does have a Wikipedia page. Okay, okay. So that's it's promising. Obviously, Wikipedia is not the end all be all, but it's just convenient at that. Oh, damn! It's a good damn. It's a good point. Nick said there's probably spoilers on here. All right, let me. Uh, it's a British comedy film. Screenplay was written by Ferguson. Set in Cornwall. Middle-aged widow whose irresponsible husband left her an enormous debt, forcing her to grow cannabis in her greenhouse along with her gardener. Okay, that actually sounds really dope. Um, damn, that's a good call, man. Uh, that's a good call, too. Man, okay, I'm throwing this up here one more time because that actually, that that sounds way better than what I expected it. Um, I'm definitely going to check that out. If if you or anybody knows where to watch that, let me know. But I'll uh, always try to find a DVD if I can. Um, you know, good point. Nick is hiding in the corner over here with the ghost. And she mentioned Detroit Rock City, uh, which is incredible. We have that, right? Somewhere. We had a DVD or something. It's probably lost in the sauce. Yeah. I was trying to find it recently because I was looking for a movie for you. Oh, I can see it. Really? Yep. Can you keep it out? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, we're going to get a blue ray of it soon. Sorry, guys. If you've got DVDs, watch what you watch, love what you love. DVDs are incredible. I just have gotten really into Blu rays over the years and 4K. And uh, um, so I like getting the Blu-rays because a lot of times they'll have like updated special features and shit too. But Detroit Rock City, another great one. I agree. This is awesome. Going in my pile for sure. Um, and this is where I need some some help. I got some good. These are some good joints. All right, so we got Bud's house from. Oh my god. Man who knows the way to my heart. He said, I might have it on DVD still. Love me some DVD. Um, so when um when my man kills Donk suggested half baked, that's where this started to veer off. He also said, Does the gentleman count? And I said, I just, I didn't know what it was. So I looked it up and I was like, I just looked it up. I was like, is this the action movie from 2020 with Matthew McConaughey? I was like, you'll have to elaborate on this choice. If so, cause I'm intrigued. And he said, I think it counts as a weed movie because Matthew plays the ganja kingpin of Britain in it. So I was like, okay, I think that meets the criteria. I won't, I won't knock it out the park. And then Jessica, the homie, as you guys can see here, Jessica, also on that thread, on the Facebook thread, said that it was a fantastic movie as well. Um, she said, oh, here we go. That's what I needed. She said, hell yes, it counts. 
And Ryan's backing you up. He said the Gentleman series. I heard it's good. All right. So sounds like we definitely got to add that to the list. I got to figure out where I can watch it in time for the weekend. But that sounds really good, too. So that's, that's three dope suggestions so far. Blood's House. Saving Grace. And the Gentleman. Thank goodness that this is being recorded. Um, it's funny. The next one was Mac and Devin go to high school. So shout out to everybody that mentioned that. Shout out to Wiz and Snoop. Uh, I w I don't want to. I don't want to spark controversy here. I don't like to be negative, Nancy. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the gentleman real quick. Jessica said, not the series, the movie. I have not seen the series yet. I didn't know either thing existed, so you guys are putting me on to all sorts of game. Um, oh, so I was going to start griping about, about uh, Mac and Devin go to high school. I don't really have a gripe about it. I just feel like when you know that how high exists it's always going to be second tier and it's not to like knock them you know i i don't hate them but uh man you know oh shout out to skeletique that joined on instagram much love to everybody checking us on instagram sorry for the slow responses you're on a different tab for some reason Okay, that was all. That was all I needed to say about Mac and Devin. Mac and Devin, you guys are great. Otherwise, wonderful, fantastic. Um, oh, then we come up to Jessica again, and she suggested Dazed and Confused, which I think, did we, did we already mention that one? I think we did. Yeah, we did. Okay, Dazed and Confused, and Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Uh, man. What a fun movie. I love that movie. I didn't pull it out, but I do think I do think I have it. Um dude, the movies are like such a fucking mess. It's not even funny. Like, so this this shelf right here, there is a second row of movies behind it. Let me demonstrate. So like right here, you can take these movies and then boom, right behind it, even more movies. So um, yeah, we, uh, we need some more room in our library. So that's why it's kind of hard to find certain stuff, but Man, I really do have some great fucking times watching Harold and Kumar. Um, just so much fun. Um, all right. Yo, Tim Gilbert. Shout out to Tim on Facebook. Tim suggested Rolling Kansas. Thought this was a really interesting choice. Um, so I wanted to pull this up people um i don't know i don't know if i've ever seen this like it sounded super familiar but um no nah, i definitely don't think i've seen this so let's uh let's show you guys what i'm seeing here too Boom. 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 rolling kansas The Murphy boys, whose hippie parents were sent to prison when they were young, have grown into problematic adults. Dick, for example, is a divorced and struggling salesman. And Dave works at a gas station. Luckily, the Murphy's parents left them a map to a secret government marijuana field. So, Dick, Dave, and their paraplegic brother, Dinka, do. Okay. 
along with two friends, set off to find this legendary pot, which they hope to sell. Uh, it says distributed by Netflix. Okay, so hopefully that's easy to watch. Um, that definitely, yo, know, Rip Torn. Okay, okay, I'm here for this. All right. Um, yeah, definitely gonna uh, definitely gonna check that one out. Big shout out to Tim Gilbert on that. Oh, my man Ryan. Uh, he goes by Ill Murray. If you guys uh, stream music anywhere, check out Ill Murray. One word: I L L M U R R A Y. Uh, he's from the Portland, Maine area. He suggested Super Mario Brothers, circa 1993. I love this movie. I think this movie is fantastic. It baffles me that at a period in time it got so much hate, but now it's getting a beautiful, beautiful uh, re-release, or it has gotten a re-release that has already sold twice. Uh, it sold out once, and so they had to bring it back again. Oh, I'm trying to remember who the hell did the box set. It was, like, incredible. Sorry, I'm just looking for the... Uh... Oh, it was Umbrella. Man, this company, Umbrella. Let me fucking pull this shit up. This company's on fucking real. Uh, well, they're very real. But uh, if you want to get into collecting Blu-rays and stuff like that, they have phenomenal packaging and products, and they do some really cool movies, as you can see. Um, kids, oh, one of my favorite movies, fucking heartbreaking, but so, so, so good. Um, okay, I thought it would be like right there, but let me see. Yeah, so they put together these, these box, these box sets that are just like, I didn't, I didn't get one yet, but, uh, look how much stuff comes in this box set. I mean, this one's a hundred bucks. You could obviously get a cheaper version of this movie as well, but and and they offer like singular versions too. Um, so don't don't be like scared by the price. But how cool is this, dude? They have like a behind the scenes experience book. They have the actual scripts. They have actual film cells. They have this replica magazine that came out when the movie came out. A sticker sheet like this is the kind of shit that just creates an experiential thing for like because you would get this and not only would you set aside time to watch the movie and it would be a special occasion at some point you'd probably be reinvigorated and go through and check all this shit out eventually or maybe you would even make a weekend of it um and so that's why i fucking will die on my uh physical media sword but so you can get it on blu-ray or you can get it on 4k or you can even get it on dvd just buy it because for a long time you couldn't find this movie it wasn't streaming everywhere um you know what i mean it wasn't always something that was easily accessible so that's why when these like special occasions come up and you can find really really beautiful packaging like that um make sure you make sure you hold on to shit like that big shout out to beekeeper 13 who also hopped in on instagram appreciate everybody that's rocking with us appreciate our facebook and youtube audience here as well bong dead will be there. oh all right so ryan said bong dead will, bong dead there will be bud is a wicked bad b movie to get stoned to that if that's really what it is, that sounds awesome. Or is this what you meant? Oh, Bong of the Dead. Okay, honestly, still sounds awesome. As somebody who has a Night of the Living Dead poster in my living room, I'll definitely check this out. Jessica said, "I just thinned out my movie collection, and it hurt my soul to get rid of them." I know the feeling. Trust me. As much <laughs> as much as it looks like I have a ton of shit here, I used to have like multiple rooms worth of stuff and over the years as i've moved we've just ended up in progressively like smaller places and so because of that we've just had to get rid of stuff that you know didn't make our collection special um 
but hopefully one day I'll live somewhere again and be fluid with money and, you know, do whatever. But so I always tell people, especially like, you know, you see it in record collecting as well as movie collecting. People that get into it will sometimes just buy everything because they need to buy it. You know, like a, a hip hop record will come out and there'll be four colorways. And so somebody's got to get all four colorways. I've literally done that before. Um, more so back in the day but like there's a big thing in collecting where people you know like another thing that i'm super guilty of is with comic books um when i collected when i was big into collecting comic books uh around the time that marvel now was really big and i want to say like maybe 2013 or so i started buying like every number one even if i didn't know what the hell it was i just would buy every number one because I thought that number ones would be rare. And if I liked the story, then I would go and buy the rest of them anyways. Um, oh, here we go. All right, I'm getting off track, but worth it. We'll always have that sacred copy of Dogma. Oh, let me tell you. I am right there with you. If you have a copy of Dogma, do not get rid of this movie ever. It is so hard to find. I mean... I'm not trying to be dramatic here. I'm sure if you like went on eBay or something, you could find a copy. But nevertheless, like this is not a movie that's easily accessible, easily streamable. And if you can find or if you already have, comes with just it's just really cool and funny the shit that they like thought out for doing this. Um you know, it's a nice little bookend there. So don't don't get rid of this if you have it. View a skew for life. I know Jessica knows the vibes. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, so oh, all right. So Super Mario Brothers on that list took me on that tangent. That's where we went. A big shout out to Umbrella Entertainment. Man, I cannot stress enough. If you want to collect movies, if you just want to have special movies, if you just want to have a couple movies, give give places like Umbrella, Arrow, Criterion. There's there's tons of these great distributors that are putting really like tactical detail into their packaging into the restoration of the movies themselves of the special features of building new features um it, it's just like man i can't stress it enough um but there's yeah there's so many great like i guess they would be like a boutique blu-ray vendor is what you would call them um but i i'm a big criterion collector um from they have the criterion collection um there's like i said arrow video um there is oh my god there's so many that it's like kino lorber is another really good one um and, and they all kind of specialize in different kinds of movies too so it's you, it's nice because you can like build up you know it's like i have a couple arrow videos that are like really wild horror movies one of them i wonder if it's i wonder if it's accessible to me yeah dude i know i'm getting off track it's not like a. I mean i guess it would be a fun movie to watch at any time especially if you were stoned but i recommend dead end driving to anybody uh it's this like awesome australian movie um such a fun fucking watch um but yeah so arrow video has really great i mean they do other stuff too like I have a really dope arrow video of um there's a couple um I think we have a pet cemetery one. Um uh, we have like House of the Dead. They do some really awesome packaging. So long live physical media. That's my spiel. Sorry, I I, I realize I'm not like making eye contact all the time. I'm sorry about that as well still figuring this out i'm kind of lower than my camera my camera is up here see what i mean so it's it's at an angle i should really like 
bring it down, but I'm figuring it out. Yo, great suggestion here. My man Matt Chikemzik suggested Biodome. <laughs> love, love Biodome. Absolute shout out to that. And he also said, dude, where's my car and grandma's boy? Um, dude, where's my car? Obviously a good choice, but grandma's boy, definitely a five-star choice. Um, I would I think if I was making a specifically 420 marathon playlist or or movie list you would have to put grandma's boy on there at this point it's it's that good um i don't think i don't think anybody's question in that right um yeah my, my brother ape is a said cheech and chong's nice dreams i like that that was a great suggestion as well um i i don't have that one i have I have like Cheech and Chong go to LA, I think it's called. Uh, I was hoping it was, I was hoping I could like rip it off there. I've been I've been getting lucky so far with a couple of these. But uh yeah, I don't know where it is. I'll have to look that one up though. I don't I don't think you could really go wrong with any Cheech and Chong movie, right? You know what I'm saying? Um uh, here we go. The Pinnacle, How High. I think How High is definitely up there as well with Grandma's Boy um, on that like necessity 420 watch list. Um, I wonder, I gotta, hmm. How High would be a movie that would, that could get really cool, like boutique Blu ray kind of shit. I don't, I'm sure there must be a regular Blu ray at least, hopefully. Um, what format do I? You know, I kind of, I kind of want how high on VHS. I feel like that would be almost the best way to watch some of these movies. Um, all right, we're almost at the end of the list. Uh, the homie, the homie. Oh, so two different bends. So one Ben suggested how high. And then another Ben right after that suggested, well, three of these we already mentioned, Pineapple Express, Dazed and Confused, and Friday. And he also dropped Malibu's Most Wanted. Um, so that's a that's an interesting choice too. Um that I might I might give that a rewatch. Um last suggestion on here is Strange Wilderness. Now I can't recall what this is, so I'm gonna pull this one up. <laughs> oh my god, I've definitely—I don't think I've seen this, but I've definitely seen like the the trailer or something for this. Let me show you guys what we're looking at here. Straight, you know, anything with Justin Long, I'm I'm sold. Um. Peter Galt takes over when his father, a respected wildlife TV host, dies, but receives far less success. When the show is threatened with cancellation, Peter and his know-nothing crew of stoners and idiots realize that only one creature can save the show, Bigfoot. Okay. I like that IMDb, literally it says, Strange Wilderness is an awful film in reality. The plot is thinner than a microscopic germ. The acting is either drug-induced or just absolutely atrocious. Okay. Good review. Oh, made by Adam Sandler's production company. All right. I'm not going to lie. That could go either way. Obviously, I love Adam Sandler. And I love Justin Long. Peter Dante was really funny. Seems like from everything that's come out that he's kind of a fucking asshole now but uh that sucks because he was super funny in uh grandma's boy and oh and alan cover okay i would give this a walk i would hope this is on oh prime video man you gotta charge me to watch it on prime i hate when they charge you for streaming shit like unless it, if it was like 99 cents or something like 
you can charge me four bucks to just like pull something up on my TV that I can't even, you know, do one thing if I was like getting a video and features and, but it's like, I don't know, it just feels weird to like rent streaming movies. What do I know? What do I know, fam? Looks like we got a couple more viewers in here. Shout out. Shout out to everybody that's jumped in. Oh, shout out to Tammy. Much love, Tammy. Um, so that was that was the list that generated through your guys' suggestions on Facebook. So I'll try and barrel through the ones that you guys added to the thread. Pineapple Express, Friday, Dazed and Confused, Bud's House, Half-Baked, Gentleman, Mac and Devin go to high school. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Rolling Kansas. Super Mario Brothers. Biodome. Grandma's Boy. Dude, where's my car? Cheech and Chong's Nice and Dreams. How High. Malibu's Most Wanted. And Strange Wilderness. That's a pretty cool list. Um, thank you, Ryan. Ryan also said, good list. Appreciate that. Um, So let me show you the ones that I picked because a couple, oh, Saving Grace, that's right. Thank you, Saving Grace. I'm really excited to check that one out. That actually sounds really good. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, so Dead End Drive-In, the one I showed you guys earlier is now in my list great great awesome movie australian horror movie funny hilarious thank you to my wonderful girlfriend nick for the suggestion of detroit rock city excited for this one did you say super troopers no that's a great one too nick just suggested super troopers i feel like not only can you watch that all the time but it's like especially great on 420. Uh, I know I have this movie. What the hell? Hopefully it's not in this back row. God damn it. Let's hope it is out. But yeah, Super Troopers, another great choice. Um, feel like everybody can can get down with the little super troopers for sure. Um, my, so, oh, so I was going through my list. So Dead End Drive-In, Detroit Rock City. I got Half-Baked, my Blockbuster copy. Shout out to that South Nashua Blockbuster. This one, I don't know if, if this is a 420 film or a stoner film. But it's like a fun movie to watch in general, especially if you're stoned. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know if it's a great call, but fanboys. I find this movie really fun. Um, the acting is, is for what it is, it's awesome. Um, I'm just a sucker for stuff like that. Um, so nice had the wrap on one of these idiocracy this is another one of those movies that you can watch all the time but i feel like especially in the world that we live in now carving out a little time to watch that for yourself is uh it's really worthwhile um this one i actually just pulled a sticker off of this that's why it's making all that noise but uh i had this on dvd and i just realized i got it on blu-ray thanks to the criterion collection oh sorry which is fear and loathing in las vegas and because i got the criterion version there's a shit ton of special features as well um fear and loathing is another one that's obviously not like a stoner movie Wow. Look at the last movie in my list and what Ryan suggested. 
how funny that we were literally on the same wavelength with that. I was holding that in my hands as the last one on my list. But that's so funny that that's the one you thought to comment right now. I was hoping nobody said it before I got to it. I have multiple copies of that movie, so it goes without a doubt that that one's definitely getting some runtime. We just did a Clerks run through recently, um, which was awesome. Uh, so yeah, that was my that was my list, and uh, this was really fun. Appreciate you guys tuning in and checking this out shout out to everybody on instagram that was checking this out and shout out to everybody on facebook and youtube that chimed in and dropped some comments for us and uh yeah this was really cool so um so basically going forward what the plan is for future episodes because this was really meant to um be like a group discussion about the movies that we love but because i wanted to kind of let people know that we were getting the podcast back and i wanted people to have a feel of of what we were talking about um so next week i will have some guests joining me and we have some really oh yes right so i was gonna say we couldn't end the list without blunt man and chronic Yo, brother, you know, not only do I have Strike Back, but I also have Jay and Silent Bob reboot. So I'm ready for I'm ready for a double header to jump 20 years. Um so like I was saying, we got some really cool episodes planned for for the upcoming weeks. The goal is to do these on Tuesday night around this time, 8 p.m. Um Part of why we wanted to do Tuesday night is to pay homage to when new movies and CDs were released in stores in our time when some of us were younger. So that's one of the reasons why I thought Tuesday would be a cool night to do this. And we can talk about things that you can acquire and watch for the weekend. So uh, the plan is these will be going out at Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Next week, I'm going to have some guests with me. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence about if we should do all of these episodes as live streams or if we should pre-record some of them and do some of them as live streams. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, let me know what you guys think. Either way, next Tuesday, we're going to have a new episode out. The topic for next Tuesday is weirdest movies i've ever seen so if you're if you follow us on facebook or instagram or any of that i'm going to set up a thread pretty soon or even comment on this video since you're already watching it um but uh weirdest films i've ever seen that's going to be our topic for next week the psychologically crazy the mind warping the disgusting the shocking the surreal we're going to talk about all the weird shit. And then we got a couple of really cool episodes planned as well. Um, I'm, I'm a big nerd about trying to remember like some of my favorite directors, uh, birthdays and stuff like that. So what I have done is a couple episodes that land on days or weeks around a certain director's birthday that I follow. Um, those will be like the discussion points for some of those episodes. Um, so later in May, we'll have an Orson Welles appreciation hour. Um, in July, we will have Stanley Kubrick and Christopher Nolan appreciation hours. And in August, we will have Kevin Smith and Alfred Hitchcock appreciation hours. I got a couple other cool ones planned as well, but, um, that's really the vibe for now. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Appreciate you all so much. Sorry if these little uh, things right here were annoying. Just trying to earn, you know, trying to earn some bread and keep the bills paid. Trying to uh, justify this fucking movie collection. So donations always help. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Hellhound Film Club. If you liked it, share it, tell a friend, and we will see you guys next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Much love, everybody. Hellhound till we underground. Preach.